about you in the daytime, think about you at night, but I know in the morning you'll be in my sight. Good morning, Miss Baker. Good morning to you. Good morning, Miss Baker. How do you do? Want to pick your peaches? Want to shake a tree, want to pick your peaches, this black Cherokee, got the hots hots for you, and I always will, got the hots hots for you, cause you give me such a thrill, like the way you walk, like the way you talk. Oh, I like a, like a having you in my thoughts. Like the way you look, like the way you smell. I said, oh, Miss Baker, wanna ring your bell. Good morning, Miss Baker. Good morning to you. Good morning, Miss Baker. How do you do? Good morning, Miss Baker. Good morning to you. Good morning, Miss Baker. How do you do? Thank you. <laughs> All right, champ. <laughs> they want me to be dull. Don't want me to use what's in my skull. They want to see me with a broom. Don't want to see me in a computer room. They want to see me looking funny. Don't want to see me with a handful of money. They want to see me as a freak. Don't want to see me stand up and speak. They want to see me dirty as can be. Don't want to see me spotless and with a PhD. They want to see me bend. Don't want to see me act like I know I can win. They want to see me break. Don't want to see me act like I'm the best at the make. Yeah, they want to see me break, but I want them to know. I said I want them to know they don't wait too late. Thank you. <laughs> Hit it. One, two, three. Oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. Harlem on my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Oh, Harlem, 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 Harlem on my mind. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I said, oh, Harlem, 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 since 1969. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, places to go and think, think, think to see. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, places to go and think, think, think to see. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I said, oh, Harlem, 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 the place I want to be. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the spirit's in the air. I can feel it, feel it, feel it everywhere. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the spirit's in the air. I can feel it, feel it, feel it everywhere. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I say when I'm not in Harlem, I'll be wishing I was there. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Harlem, 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 Harlem on my mind. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. Harlem on my mind. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I said, oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem since 1969. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. If you want to see a good show, mm -hmm. the Apollo is the place to go. Mm -mm -mm. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. If you want to see a good show, the Apollo is the place to go. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. And you'll be coming, coming back, coming back for some more. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, 116 in Linux is my stomping ground. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, 116 in Linux is my stomping ground. Mm-mm-mm. And my friends and the Muslim are all, are all around. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, Harlem, 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 Harlem on my mind. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, Harlem, 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 Harlem on my mind. Mm-mm-mm. I said, oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem since 1969. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, 110 in the park, the place I like to be Mm-mm-mm. oh 110 in the park the place i like to be Mm-mm-mm. i said i see the children and the children children see me Mm-mm-mm. oh 125th i see the pretty women every day Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, 125th, I see the pretty women every day. Mm-mm-mm. And I feel so good, I get just one to say hey. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, just walking down the street, I feel like I'm so unique. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, just walking down the street, I feel like I'm so unique. Cause I'm walking, 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 I'm walking down Harlem Street. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, Harlem, 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 Harlem on my mind. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. Harlem on my mind. Mm-mm-mm. I said, oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. Just look at who that behind. Mm-mm-mm. I said, oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. Just look at who that behind. Mm-mm-mm. I said, oh, Harlem, Harlem, Harlem. Since 1969. Just look at that behind him. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, <that's> it. <laughs> Thank you. Practice, practice. <laughs>
Possible schemes. You can laugh when your dreams fall apart at the seams. And life is more exciting with each passing day. And love is either in your heart or on its way. Don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be young at heart? And if you should derive at 105, look at all you derive out of being alive. And here is the best part. You have a head start if you are among the very young at heart. I chose tonight to read the story of Little Black Sambo by Helen Bannerman. I'm reading this story because I realize a lot of people do not know this story. And this story is kind of essential to my upbringing. I learned this, I, this story was read to me as a child, but this story was banned by the NAACP around the 50s and the 60s, but it's never been out of print. And um, so I'm gonna read it. And actually there's a preface here which I think kind of helps me along. The Story of Little Black Sambo by Helen Bannerman. I'm gonna read you the text and I'm gonna leave out the pictures because nobody ever liked the pictures. This, there, is a, there is very little to say about the story of Little Black Sambo. Once upon a time, there was an English lady in India where black children abound and tigers were everyday affairs, who had two little girls. To amuse these little girls, she used now and then to invent stories for which, being extremely talented, she also drew, up, drew and colored the pictures. Among these stories, Little Black Sambo, which was made up on a long railway journey, was the favorite, and it was put into a dumpy book, and the picture copies are exactly as possible to the, in the hope that you will like it as much as the two little girls did, and we're not gonna look at them damn pictures. <laughs> the story of Little Black Sambo. Once upon a time, there was a little black boy, and his name was Little Black Sambo. And his mother was called Black Mumbo. And his father was called Black Jumbo. 
And Black Mumbo made him a beautiful little red coat and a pair of beautiful little trousers. Now, I don't know if any of you realize that home sewing used to be, home, Indian people had sewing machines in their home. Actually, the, the people that in my neighborhood had sewing machines in their home as well. My home had two sewing machines in it. So I related to the mother having a sewing machine and actually being able to make a coat and a pair of trousers. My mother did the same thing for me. And, and Black Jumbo, the father, went to the bazaar and brought him a beautiful green umbrella and a lovely pair of purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. Well, my father was really kind of estranged from the family, but he would also send me little packages and things. And I think he worked for um, Spiegel Catalog. So we used to get little, I didn't get any green umbrella, and I didn't get any purple shoes, but I used to get clothes in the mail. And then was a little black sambo grand. So he put on all his fine clothes and went out for a walk in the jungle. Now, all these, why do always children's stories always have a woods, the forest, the jungle? And now, what does that mean? What does that mean exactly? Those trees in the darkness? Anyway. Forest, jungle, so it's a jungle. And by and by he met a tiger. And the tiger said to him, Little Black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And then Little Black Sambo said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. So the tiger said, Very well, I won't eat you up this time, but you must give me your beautiful little red coat. So the tiger got poor Little Black Sambo's beautiful little red coat, and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And Little Black Sambo went on. And by and by he met another tiger. And it said to him, Little Black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And Black Sambo said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger says, very well, I won't eat you this time. But you must give me those beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger got poor little black Sambo's beautiful little blue trousers and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little black Sambo went on and by and by he met another tiger. And it said to him, little black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And little black Sambo said, oh please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. I didn't even know Ruby Tom was working back there. <laughs> But the tiger said, what use would your little shoes be to me? I've got four feet, and you've only got two. You haven't got enough shoes for me. Now, this is where I realized Little Black Sambo was the first stylist. <laughs> but Little Black Sambo said, you could wear them on your ears. <laughs> so I could, said the tiger. That's a very good idea. Give them to me, and I won't eat you this time. So the tiger got, little, got poor Little Black Sambo's beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings and went away saying, now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And by and by, Little Black Sambo met another tiger. And it said to him, Little Black Sambo, I'm going to eat you up. And Little Black Sambo said, oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up. And I'll give you my beautiful green umbrella. But the tiger said, how can I carry an umbrella when I need all my paws for walking? Oh, Sambo was the smarty. He said, you could not have. You could tie a knot in your tail and carry it that way. <laughs> Give it to me and I won't eat you this time. So the poor, so he got poor little black Sambo's beautiful green umbrella and went away saying, now nah, I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And I met he was with that tie, that umbrella tied and hanging over his head. And poor little black Sambo went away crying because the cruel tigers had taken away all his fine clothes. Now there's also this thing about strip teas in children's stories. <laughs> Why do the children always wind up with no clothes? Mm -hmm. And poor little black Sambos was crying because the crew tigers had taken away all his fine clothes. Presently, presently, he heard a horrible noise that sounded like and it got louder and louder. Oh dear, said little black Sambo. There are all the tigers coming back to eat me up. What should I do? So he ran quickly to a palm tree and peeped around to see what the matter was. And there he saw all the tigers fighting and disputing which of them was the grandest. Now ain't that something? And, all, and at last they all got so angry that they jumped up 
and took off all their fine clothes and began to tear each other with their claws and bite each other with their great teeth. And, and they came rolling and tumbling right to the foot of the very tree where little black Samba was hiding. And he jumped quickly behind the umbrella and the tigers all caught a hold of each other's tail as they wrangled and scrambled and so they found themselves in a ring around the tree. Then when the tigers were very we and very far away, little black Sambo jumped up and called out, oh tigers, why, haven't, why have you taken off all your nice clothes? Don't you want them anymore? But the tigers couldn't answer. They had a mouthful of tail. They could only say, girl. So little black Sambo put all his fine clothes on again and walked off. And the tigers were very, very angry, but still they would not let go of each other's tail. And they were so angry that they ran around the tree trying to eat each other up. And they ran faster and faster till they were whirling around so fast they couldn't see their legs at all. And they still ran faster and faster and faster till they all just melted away and there was nothing left but a big pool of melted butter or ghee, as it is called in India, around the foot of the tree. Now this is where I fell out. I'm like, okay. I've been buying this story all along. I was into the clothes and like losing the clothes and getting the clothes back. And the tigers, I can understand them holding on each other's tail and running around the tree, but tigers do not melt into butter. And grown people tell the little children stories. Now little black Samba was just coming home, I'm sorry, black Jumbo, the father, was just coming home from his work with a great big brass pot under his arm. And when he saw what was left of all the tigers, he said, oh, what lovely melted butter. I'll take that home to Black Mumbo for her to cook with. So he put, all, so he put it all in the great big brass pot and took it home to Black Mumbo to cook with. When Black Mumbo saw the melted butter, wasn't she pleased? Now she said, we'll all have pancakes for supper. Now, I didn't know that pancakes were indigenous to India. I thought Aunt Jemima made that shit up. Excuse me. So she got flour and eggs and milk and sugar and butter, and she made a huge big plate of the most lovely pancakes, and she fried them in the melted butter which the tigers had made, and they were just as yellow and brown as little tigers. And they all, and then they all sat down to supper, and Black Mumbo ate 27 pancakes, and Black Jumbo ate 55, but little Black Sambo ate 169 because he was so hungry. And that's where the story ends with pancakes. <laughs> what is this story about? <laughs> I have come to believe that little black Samuel was on his spiritual journey and he met his feelings, fear, love, anger, pain in these tigers. And he had to learn how to construct, he had to learn how to self-control. He learned how to get get over his feelings and not let his feelings take him away. And the idea that the tigers were so angry that they could not let go of their anger, I think is really the message of the story. Do I let my anger take me away to the point where I cannot let it go? Resentment. Do I hold on to that stuff until I just whirl around the tree and turn into butter? I think that's what this story is about. Don't let your feelings destroy you. Have a lovely day and enjoy the pancakes.